Hello and welcome. My name is Jay and I am your StriveScan facilitator for this afternoon session here. We are so happy to have you. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. A lot of words there, but we have a lot of great schools here to give you some great information. I'm gonna give you a couple of housekeeping items before we get started and launch with all of our awesome schools. So one of the first things to say is that at the very bottom of your screen, maybe at the top, there's a Q&A button. You can use that to type your questions to our presenters at any time, and they can try to respond after their presentation is over. Now, your camera and video are completely off, so we cannot see or hear you. No worries there. Uh, this is just one of many sessions, so do not worry. You can learn about all these great schools here in this hour and more schools after today. Also, if you are looking to get the recording, just in case you miss anything, anything along those lines, go ahead and follow up with us at strivescan.com forward slash W-A-C-A-C, and we'll be able to get you that recording within about one week. So now I'm gonna stop talking and pass it over to our first presenter, CSU Channel Islands, go ahead and take it away for us. All right, thank you. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to today's session. My name is Caesar. I'm an admissions counselor and I'll be going ahead and giving you some information from CSU Channel Islands. So we are part of the California State University system. We're the 23rd campus founded in 2002. Uh, so we're all that newish vibe that we used to have that's kind of gone away. We feel a little bit more established now, so no worries there. We have about 7,000 students currently enrolled on our campus. So in comparison to some of our uh, sister campuses, what you're gonna hear about in just a moment, uh, we're a little bit smaller, uh, but our students definitely enjoy that vibe. They love the 22 to one student to faculty ratio, uh, where you have about 25, 35 to maybe 45 students per classroom. So if you want that nice environment, we can connect with your faculty and fellow dolphins along the way in an easier uh, vibe, uh, that definitely would be benefit for you if you love that small classroom experience. Experience. For those that are not familiar, uh, we're not located on an island as much as I would love to take a boat to work every day. Some people think we are just given by our name, totally understandable, but we're located in Camarillo, California. So that's in Ventura County, and we're about an hour away between LA and Santa Barbara counties. So we definitely take advantage of our location for both pleasure and educational purposes, bring a lot of good uh, community uh, members to our campus to get connected with our students. Um, we have 26 to 37 minors. I always get asked, what is our campus known for? That's a tough question for me to answer because we're not really particularly known for one particular area. We have uh, various different majors, as you can see there on your screen. The ones highlighted in red, which are biology, business, health science, psychology, and sociology. Those are our most popular ones in terms of total enrollment. Uh, we're not an impacted campus, but we do have two impacted programs, which include nursing and mechatronics engineering. Uh, there is, when it, when it means to be impacted, it means there's additional admission criteria that students need to meet, and there's maybe a different admission process as well for each. So I encourage you to visit our website if these are programs that you're interested in to find out more about those admissions processes and additional criteria. Nursing is... 11th best, best in the state of California. Super awesome for us to show that off. Megatronics, that's a combination of mechanical, electronic, and computer engineering. So good programs from both. We have an abundance of student resources. There's a lot way more than we have listed here on this slide, but I just want to give you an idea of what we have to offer. We have peer mentors, academic advisors, uh, those that are helping your students to figure out our graduation requirements, we have disability accommodations and support services, uh, support services for our first generation college students, students of low-income families. Um, there's a student um, abroad office, Veteran Resource Center, a lot of great information so that you can be successful and receive some extra help outside of the classroom. We have a lot of straight, great student events and um, student clubs and organizations. A lot of stuff happening around our campus. Even though we're not big, we're still very lively here and keep our students busy and interacting with us in between classes. And we definitely still hosted a lot of these events virtually when we weren't um, teaching in person. Well, Campus Recreation Center, we have um, intramural teams and club sports. So they're non-NCAA division sports. We have a Channel Islands Boating Center located on the Channel Islands Harbor, which is about 10 minute drive from our ag campus. We offer some cool free activities for our students on the water, sailing, kayaking, and stand up paddle boarding is just a few examples, all free for the students. And we have a research station out at the Santa Rosa Island. 
which is super awesome. It's the one location you do have to take a boat to. Uh, we have uh, environmental science programs that all go out there and take advantage of the research station, but we also have had like Chicano studies and business go out there. So a lot of different programs doing research out there. Maybe you don't want to do research and want to visit the island for free. You can definitely do that. We have um, hiking trips and overnight camping trips. So I definitely recommend it if you've never visited any of the China islands. Uh, super beautiful out there and great way to just take a break in between classes. So how do I apply to CSU China Islands? We follow this the same application period as all other CSUs do, which is October 1st through November 30th for fall 2022 admissions. So fall 2022 is open for first time freshmen and upper division transfer students. We do offer spring admissions as well, but that's only for transfer students coming from community college and another for your university. So that's why I'm not sharing it here on our screen. And we, we use the same California State or the Cal State Apply application from that all CSUs get to use. So you only fill out you only fill out one application and get you send it to as many as CSUs as you'd like. So what are our um, freshmen requirements? We are requiring the A through G's uh, pattern that you see here on your screen, which by the way, I will be the only one showing um, sharing the A through G requirements from this group in this hour. So uh, make sure to take a screenshot here if you want to find out more or run it, reference it later. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you're probably familiar about this already. But just a reminder, we only accept C minus uh, grades or better from our A through G's. Uh, we do not accept letter D grades. So be careful with that. If your high school accepts a letter G for graduation, awesome, but we cannot accept it for admission. We do accept credit and past grades that you receive from winter 22 all the way to spring 2021. And this information is also on our website if you want to reference it later. Just wanted to give you an understanding that we are uh, requiring freshmen to complete our A through G pattern. In addition to that, we are asking that students have a minimum of 2.50 or greater in your A through G courses. Um, and also for fall 2022, we are still temporarily suspending the use of ACT and ACT examinations. You can take them. We encourage you to take them. They help you for English and math placements for your first semester here at CSU China Islands, but we are not looking at them at all for admission purposes. Um, if you do fall between 2.0 and 2.49 GPA, there is additional criteria that we'll look at to determine if you are admissible to our campus. Some examples are there listed on your screen, and this is also posted on our website as well if you want to find out more about that. Uh, I would love for you all to come visit our campus, and I always say this, come visit our campus, but we can't right now. It's still closed to the public. We do offer a virtual tour. Please visit this website here. There's a friendly avatar lady that walks you around. The building shows you off the grounds a lot of good stuff and you can do it all in the comfort of your own home. And this is our contact information. Please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can contact us via email, phone. There's a live chat service. Follow us on social media. Um, we'll be happy to have, uh, help answer any questions you may have. And please connect with us with any information that you want from our campus and we'll be happy to help. So that's all the information I have for today. Thank you again for joining us. Um, enjoy the rest of our sessions here. Beautiful, thank you so much. We are gonna now move on to our second presenter, Cal State Northridge, come on up. Hello, hello everybody. Let me go ahead and set up for you. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I somehow lost my mouse. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry for that interruption there. So my name is Cynthia Martinez. I'm the outreach counselor at Cal State Northridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you know where CSUN is. We're located in Los Angeles area. We're in a suburban area in the city of Northridge. We're about 40 minutes away from downtown LA, from Santa Monica, Beverly Hills. As you can see, all the places that we're pretty close by. Some stats and facts about CSUN. We offer more than 60 majors, 70 master's degrees, three doctorals. We're one of the larger campuses. We're about 38,000 students. We are a division one school that offers 10 women's teams and then seven men's team. If you are interested in playing for our student athletics, you want to go ahead and make sure that you contact the athletic department for more information on how you can find out about playing for us at a division one level. And then our low student to faculty ratio is about 25 students to one. 
We definitely encourage our students to get involved as being as a large campus, we encourage to get involved in cultural ethnic activities. We have your traditional fraternity sororities, special interest groups. We have a lot of different professional organizations that students get involved with. And we also have sports clubs. So if you're not at a division one um, level plane of sports, we do have sports clubs and we also compete with other campuses as well. So it's a great way. And then too, at CSUN, since we're located in a suburban area, a lot of us do give back to our local community. So we offer a lot of volunteer organizations to get involved with. So Matador activities and resources, we have our Career Center, we have our Disability Resources and Educational Services. So if you need additional accommodations for your classes, you could definitely reach out to them. We have our Student um, Health Center, we have our Learning Resource Center, which is located in our OVA library. We have our Student Recreational Center, and then my favorite thing about CSUN is the Oasis Center. And what's great about the Oasis, it's a great place for students to go ahead and take a break from their classes. We offer nap pods, with share therapy, we also have a little location so students can sit outside by the fireplace on a cozy night and just kind of relax and hang out. And then our big activities are a big shore and matador nights. And then we also offer um, outdoor adventures, which is a great way for students to get to see the great outdoors. Student housing, we have a variety of student housing for our students. So we have our freshman only suites, apartment style and living learning communities. So for our freshman suites only, you are required to buy a meal plan. And then we have apartment style, which is a living room, a kitchen and two bedrooms. Some of our popular unique majors are business administration, cinema, television, arts, deaf studies, earn our ethnic cultural studies and music. And then here's a listing of our ethnic and cultural studies that we have on our campus, because at CSUN we have a long history of ethnic and cultural studies. Cost of attendance, so in-state cost of attendance for tuition and fees about um, $7,000. If you're an out-of-state student, it's $16,000. So cost of attendance for in-state tuition is $20,000 and for out-of-state students, it's 30,000. So our impacted majors, since we are a large campus, we do have impacted majors. So as you can see, there are 11 impacted majors, which means that you'll just have to have a higher algebra index and a higher GPA to get into these particular majors. I just want to quickly highlight our music major. With our music major, you would have to audition. So not only do you apply to the campus, you'll also do an audition process for the music program. So our freshman requirements, like we said, we have the A through G um, requirements for all our students. We have um, a two, we work on a two tier system. So tier one is for all our local students. Tier two would be our non-local students. And then we have our out of state impaction and then for our international students. Transfer requirements, you need to have 60 transferable units, a minimum GPA of a 2.0. However, if you're looking at those impacted majors, you want to go above a 3.0. Make sure you're in good academic standing and that you've completed all the four basic subjects. Cal State Apply, like Channel Island said, is the one place you'll go to apply to all 23 campuses. Connect with our peer mentors. It's a great way to meet with current CSUN students. They can help you with basic questions about the campus. We offer 30 minute appointments or if you just want to ask a quick question about CSUN, we do have a chat feature for them. So if you really want to get to know um, what CSUN is all about, I would definitely encourage you to um, connect with our CSUN peer mentors. And then if you want to go ahead, connect with me or for any of our outreach counselors, you can go ahead and meet with the counselors. You can just go to our csun.edu slash outreach slash meet with a CSUN counselor. And then that way you'll get to see all the different counselors. And there's um, we have little um, special notes about ourselves so you can get to know us a little bit better. And then this is all of our contacts. So staying connected with us with admissions and records, disability resources, and educational services. We do have a dream center on our campus. Our EOP program is for our freshman students and our transfer students. If you want to go ahead and find out more information, please go to EOP at CSUN.edu. And then for our EOP, EOP program, we also um, have an interview process for both freshmen and transfer, our scholarships de um, department, National Center on Deafness, and then more information about CSUN housing, you just go to csun.edu slash housing. And then if you want to find out anything about CSUN, I call student outreach and recruitment is basically the 411 of the CSUN campus. So if you want to know anything about us, you just go to csun.edu slash outreach. Thank you so much. We're going to move right along. Cal Maritime, you're ready to go. 
Hi, so my name is Jessica. I am the uh, freshman enrollment counselor here at, uh, well, here at Cal Maritime, I say that respectively. So I just want to start off my presentation with a fantastic aerial shot of our campus. We are on the San Francisco Bay in this little area called Morro Cove. So we're right off Highway 80. So we're about an hour south of Sac State and about an hour inland of San Francisco State and roughly 45 minutes north of Cal State East Bay. So we're in the Bay Area, but we're still kind of centrally located. So one thing that I love to point out about this picture is that we have plenty of amenities, but the majority of our residence halls do have waterfront views. And just like Channel Islands, we're not on an island, um, even though we are a waterfront campus. And while we don't take a boat to school, we do have a pretty cool training ship. And I'm going to mention that in a few minutes. So just really quick, a little bit of uh, kind of disclaimer, if you will, about Cal Maritime, because you're going to see some interesting pictures. We are a fully fledged Cal State campus. We're just the smallest and most specialized. And when I say smallest, I mean it. We have less than 1,000 students, just barely under. But at the same time, we get a lot of questions about why we wear this fantastic khaki uniform. We're not a military school. We never have been, we never will be, but we stole their look. So people who go to work on ships down the line, which is what we teach students how to do, they typically wear uniforms. So when you think of a ship captain or an engineer down in the engine room of a ship, they wear a uniform. So our kind of overall experience is like a private high school experience in the sense that it's very small class sizes, hands-on, uh, you know, quality interactions and relationships with your faculty and your fellow students, but at the Cal State price. So uh, emphasizing that hands-on experience, just um, kind of a blanket statement, every single one of our students travels internationally before they graduate and every single student completes at least one internship. So this is just part of the way that we have uh, helped our students continue their hands-on experience during the summers and build their resume. So they have stuff to talk about in their interviews when they go for careers down the line. We have seven majors total. That's right, less than 10. Uh, again, most specialized campus, but the water is our niche area. Trade on the water, commerce, um, the safety of it, the uh, now the study of it, because we've added oceanography. So we have a mix of majors that, you know, most of their jobs take place on land. And then we also have um, majors where their jobs will be on ships, either driving the ship or maintaining the ship. So there's a little bit of a variety. But because, again, it's we are Cal State, it's a well-rounded education. This comes in handy for some of our students that sail eventually and maybe physically can't sail anymore or they you know have families and they want to stay shoreside because they're getting their general education you know component as well they can transfer shoreside so there's a lot of versatility in these degrees and what they can do with them now i mentioned that uniform like i said everyone looks fantastic in khaki makes it really easy to do laundry makes it really easy to get up in the morning because you know exactly what you're going to wear if you're not in class you don't have to wear the uniform there's no hazing there's no physical training there's no saluting there's no yes ma'am yes sir anything like that we just like you to look good for classes we want you to know kind of have that sense of accountability that sense of professionalism um, in addition to what's called the core of cadets which is the militaristic structure to our student body we also have our, you know, your typical student body government, like class vice president, class treasurer, all the fun campaign slogans. So the associated students of Cal Maritime are responsible for your social life, like clubs and outdoor activities and movie nights and trivia nights, as well as your representation for student rights. Um, with our, with that international travel component, where you go and what you do depends on your major. So not everyone goes on our 500 foot training ship. Only the engineers and the marine transportation students take the golden bear out during the summers. Some of them will do it twice because like I said, their job will be on the water down the line. Some majors like mechanical engineering and facilities engineering, they only do it once because it's like a built-in internship. But then after that, they do shore-based internships. So it's gonna be at least three summers or all three summers that they're with Cal Maritime, they're doing summer activities, building their hands-on experiences. Now with the International Study Tour, this is for our business, global studies, and oceanography majors. Now this is more of a like a one month professional immersion experience. So it is different than the study abroad, which the rest of the Cal State system has access to, and so do our students. But at this point in time, the International Study Tour is only open to Cal Maritime students. But what they're doing every day is, is you know, different activities where they are visiting shipbuilding yards, manufacturing plants. So on both of these trips, their daily activities are all about skill building, specifically in their area of study. Um, we are, you know, we already mentioned the A through G, so just a few extra things that I want to mention because 
uh, each campus has some kind of slight adjustments this year. For us, it's that 2.5 minimum GPA for California residents. And then if you don't quite meet that minimum GPA, we will look at a few extra things. So we'll look at how many additional A through G semesters you took, and we'll give you points for all of that. Um, we'll give you points if you're a local student in Solano County, we'll give you points for a few extra things. But all of that's in hopes of getting you into eligi the, in eligibility range. And I do want to mention business, global studies, and oceanography are not impacted. So if you meet the CSU minimum qualifications, you're going to be guaranteed an author in that program. Now, our engineering majors in marine transportation, they are competitive to get into, but not impossible. What we're looking for in terms of beyond the minimum is going to be your math GPA, which does include freshman year. We're also going to look at how many math classes you took specifically, and then those extra classes. So it's going to be a balance. So it will help if you have maybe a less competitive GPA. There are ways to um, bring you into uh, eligibility and into competitiveness. Um, in terms of financial aid, there are plenty of opportunities. I think we all talked about it. Just go onto the website and look for scholarships. I think we can all say that like 20 times and we really mean it every single time. But I just wanna stress that there are opportunities to work on campus and <laughs> you can work on the ship in addition to taking classes. So that's always kind of a cool thing. Um, last but not least, a little bit of, of opportunities to get to know us. Check out our website, do a virtual tour. We actually just launched in-person tours. We're extremely careful with them. Um, we have you know special procedures for them, but we're allowing our admitted students to come visit us and preparing for accepted students in the fall. And then also my contact information there in the top corner. Um, I'm the freshman counselor. So if you're interested in Cal Maritime at all and have any questions, reach out to me. And if you're a transfer, I'll put you in touch with our awesome transfer counselor, who's also a crew coach. So he's gonna be recruiting you if you're interested in rowing backwards, which is what crew is. So that's my spiel and I'm gonna hand it over. Thanks so much. Thank you. We are gonna go on to the second half of our evening now with San Diego State. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Great to kind of virtually see everybody here today. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so just going over a, a little bit specifically more about San Diego State University, as you can see a little bit from the screen there that we've got kind of that Spanish mission style architecture, just beautiful campus, lush greenery. Um, you can see our turtle pond that is on campus as well. Um, we are just in the process of breaking grounds on our brand new football arena. We are division one as well. Um, so a couple of things about San Diego State that really make us stand out is our affordability for the value of the education that you're going to be getting. Um, we're ranked number one in California and fifth in the nation for the amount of students we have that do study abroad. Um, we have seven different colleges on our campus with offering over 96 different undergraduate majors. So uh, our nursing program program is a direct acceptance program. We have eight different ABET accredited engineering majors. Um, we have several different pre-professional programs. So if you're looking to go on to dental school, law school, medical, uh, pharmacy, physician assistant, physical therapy, veterinarian, there's a lot of opportunities to do a degree in say biology with an emphasis in one of those pre-professional areas. Um, for those of you that are unsure of what you want to study, that's very common. Um, we're dedicated to providing you a lot of resources to guide you along the way, and you are able to apply as an undeclared student. Uh, San Diego is definitely known as uh, America's finest city, um, but it's really become a hub for biotechnology and a lot of other different uh, major industries. So a really great place to jumpstart your career, getting internships and job placements, both um, during your uh, time at SDSU and beyond. So we have several different stunning beaches within uh, close proximity. Our students especially love Pacific Beach and Mission Beach. Um, you can get down to the Mission Bay Aquatic Center where you can actually take a stand up paddle boarding or a kayaking, a sailing, water skiing class for college credit. Um, we're the only university that's directly on the trolley line, which makes it super easy to get around. Um, we're less than 10 miles to downtown on the gas lamp quarter, but you can take that trolley down to the beach, to the mall. Um, we have a Trader Joe's right on campus, but definitely quick access to everywhere from Pacific Beach, Ocean Beach, La Jolla, Coronado. Um, plus you have a lot of different uh, large national parks that are close by. 
Um, when it comes to life after college, our career services department does a really great job of providing you with tools to find internships and eventually land a job. Uh, we have over 300,000 lifelong Aztecs. So um, we have a really great Aztec mentoring program where in your junior year, you can actually connect with a professional uh, within the field of your interest. We also have our Weber Honors College. This is a separate application process outside of the CSU application. So if that's something that you're interested in, as you get closer to that period, you'll wanna make sure you're checking those separate deadlines. Um, but we do have typically in any given year, over 3000 students who are studying in 70 different countries worldwide. Um, but our campus really fosters shared experiences, values and aspirations that embrace unique identities. So we have support services through our Black Resource Center, Pride Center, Women's Resource Center. Um, so just lots of opportunities to get support on campus. As far as admissions, um, this past year, our average incoming GPA was around a 3.97. Um, the application does open up October 1st, closes up usually right around uh, end of November, early December, but we did have over 100,000 applications this past year. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you review the checklist. Um, as everybody's mentioned previously, um, there are a few little different factors that are just a little bit unique, especially if you're looking to go into nursing, you're gonna wanna make sure to check out what those requirements are for the different math and sciences. Um, biggest piece of recommendation that I can give you to be a competitive student, go above and beyond that minimum A through G requirement, those 15 credits, and really try to see if you can take some more math, some more science, especially if you're looking to go into biology, one of the STEM majors, and the nursing major. Um, as far as student life, we have over 350 different organizations on campus. There is everything from recreation to religion, leadership to social action. If you're looking to get involved with Greek life, we have over 46 different Greek life opportunities. Um, arts is a huge part of our campus, but on any given day, you can really find students hanging out on campus, enjoying free performances at our different venues, movie screenings, farmer's markets, um, hanging out in the Mediterranean garden. And of course, that's just on campus. There's so much to get out and explore um, within the greater San Diego area. Um, we have our Aztec Aquaplex. We have two large outdoor pools on campus. Um, beautiful recreation center that is in the process of actually being extended. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, you can also take um, a, a class through Mission Bay Aquatic Center and actually get college credit for that. Um, we did just seal the Mountain West Conference title this weekend, so go Aztecs. Um, we have 18 different men's and women's Division I sports, um, but like I mentioned, it's just a really unique time with us breaking grounds on our football stadium that is just two trolley stops away. Um, so just a, a lot of fun things to get involved with if you're looking to play intramurals, again, a way to be competitive uh, within those sports. And then lastly, just keeping in touch, this has all of our different regionals and which states that they cover. So be sure to take down their contact information so that if you have more specific questions, you can certainly reach out to them. And then just one last thing, I recommend going onto our website and checking out the Explore SDSU. So that's two dates coming up on March 17th and April 20th, where you're gonna learn tons more about all of our different majors, student life, Greek life, um, all kinds of different things. So I highly recommend. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. We're going to move right along to Sonoma State University. Take it away. All righty. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and make our way down from Southern California up north to uh, what we know as the North Bay. Um, Again, just a quick introduction. My name is Ricardo Calderon. I'm one of the enrollment advisors for Sonoma State University. Sonoma State University is located in Rohnert Park, California. So it's about 45 minutes north of San Francisco. So not too far away from the city life, um, but we are known to be in the wine country. So um, if any of your parents are interested in that, definitely a place to be. Um, Sonoma County is home to uh, like I said, Sonoma State, but also to many uh, nature trails, beaches, so a lot of great nature things that students are able to get involved in. Um, currently, our population of students is about 8,600 students, and that is for undergraduate and graduate students. Um, and we were established in 1960, so we're not necessarily um, an older campus, kind of newer campus, um, also not the smallest um, is what I've learned, but we are um, a fairly small campus with um, the population of students. 
Our mascot is the Sea Wolf, so a very unique um, mascot, which is a mythical creature from Jack London's novel series. So if you're into literature um, and, and doing a little bit of research around that, that is where um, our mascot comes from. So I like to say that it's a mixture between a dolphin and a wolf, um, and then that's kind of the mascot. So our students are very proud to be um, sea wolves here at the university. Cool, so just giving you a little glance um, about Sonoma State by the numbers, we currently are ranked as number one when it comes to graduation rates for transfer students in the CSU system, um, also known as the California State University system. Um, number one nursing program according to uh, gradreports.com based on the median salary that our students are making after graduating from Sonoma State's nursing program. Um, number four, when it comes to graduation rates for freshmen within the CSU system, number 14 public school in the West, and then student to faculty ratio is about 23 to one. So that is definitely something that we pride ourselves in offering our students is that intimate and close relationship with faculty members. Um, faculty know who you are. They know when you're not going to class. They know when you are excelling in class and they're able to provide you with um, some amazing opportunities to engage in research, um, to put your name on you know, some amazing research that's being um, done within the field that you're interested in. On average, a class size is about 25 to 29. Um, that typically is the class size for those um, that are in upper division courses. Um, as a first year students, our st kind of classes are about 40, um, 40 to 50 students, still fairly small compared to other institutions. Um, so again, you know, here at Sonoma State, we pride ourselves in being able to build community um, within students, faculty and staff, um, and you're able to get that through that class size as well. So kind of following on um, what other folks have mentioned about impacted majors here at Sonoma State University, the impacted majors that you see on the screen um, are the ones that have additional requirements. So it could be a specific GPA. Um, there's some that have supplemental questions that you'll need to ask uh, or that you'll need to answer prior to being admitted to the program. Um, this changes or this list is constantly changing. So um, I always encourage you, depending on when you are ready to apply to the university, to check out our website, get an idea of what those impacted majors are, what the requirements requirements are, and then we're able to walk you through that process. Um, if you're not sure of where you fall when it comes to the requirements, um, we'll highly encourage you to meet with us um, and we're able to walk you through that process as well. So kind of discussing some academic opportunities, we offer over 45 different majors to students um, and over 70 different distinct concentrations. One of the programs that I always like to highlight because it is pretty unique to Sonoma State um, is our wine business program. So we are one of the few institutions in the country that are able to provide our students with this program. It makes sense, we're in the wine country, vineyards are surrounding Sonoma State. Um, so students are able to really not, not so much learn about how to make wine, but more of the distribution and the selling and marketing of the wine product. So a lot of our students who are interested in majoring in business administration will typically also choose their concentration in wine business. Um, so we're connecting these students with internships with um, some phenomenal opportunities throughout Sonoma County. If you're interested in being a little bit more hands on and doing some research. Um, again, this is an opportunity that students are able to engage in. We have over 64 different study abroad programs that students are able to pick from. Um, if you don't want to go to another country, you're able to do a national student exchange program, which means that you go to another um, state um, or even Puerto Rico as well. Um, obviously right now because of uh, COVID, a lot of restrictions um, are in place with that. So hopefully um, in the near future, we're able to send our students abroad as well. And for those of you who are um, athletic fanatics, we are part of the NCAA Division II athletics. Some of the sports that we offer are basketball, baseball, golf, soccer, softball, and volleyball. But we also offer some club sports. And so these are still as competitive sports, um, but the, the, the time is a little bit different in, in regards to demand. So we have cheer, dance, um, a lacrosse, rowing, and rugby team. Rowing is a very popular um, club sport here at the university as well as lacrosse. And one of the favorite things that I always like to talk about is campus housing. So here at the university, you will experience um, what we call suite and apartment style living. These are non-traditional dorms, so you're not going to share a bathroom with you know, a full hallway. Um, you have the opportunity to have your own bathroom or maybe to share it with one other person. So we have over six different residential villages that are all named after wine. It makes sense. Um, we also have the opportunity of living learning communities for students. Over 90% of our first year students are able to live on campus if they choose to. Some of the resources here that we like to uh, share with our students, just so you know that you're gonna be able to be successful. 
And then when it comes to freshman admission, we're looking that you're a high school graduate, that you meet those A through G requirements, um, and again, those impact and major requirements. Our application opens October 1st to November 30th. Um, encourage our students to make those decisions um, of applying to the university and accepting their admission before May 1st. And I encourage you to stay connected with us, whether that's through my office with student outreach and recruitment. Um, and then I will put in the chat an inquiry form. I highly encourage you to fill that out so you can stay up to date with scholarship deadlines and some amazing opportunities at the university. Thank you so much. We are gonna move along now onto our final presentation with Humboldt State University. Caleb, go ahead and take it away. Awesome, thank you very much, Jay. And I'm gonna assume you can all see my screen here. So uh, I need to move a few things around, there we go. All right, well, we got a few minutes here. I believe we got six minutes to uh, to present all this information to you. Uh, the good thing is that uh, a lot of the information that you've heard also is also applicable to Humboldt State University because we're also part of the Cal State system when it comes to admissions requirements and all that good stuff. So uh, in the next six minutes, I want to just briefly introduce you to Humboldt State University. And I wouldn't be surprised if a few, a few of you have not even heard about Humboldt State. Uh, it seems that some of the more popular campuses uh, like San Diego State, San Francisco State, though everyone's heard of that, but we are really a hidden gem uh, that some students have not heard of. So we are all the way up north. Uh, we're 95 miles south of the Oregon border, as you can see on the little map. And uh, we are 275 miles northwest of San Francisco. Um, so one thing is that we're actually between like Portland, Oregon and San Francisco. So, uh, and I'm going to dive into this a little bit more, but even though we're kind of a rural town, uh, we still get a lot of traffic, a lot of musicians. So there's concerts, performances, a lot of, a lot of fun events, but, um, we are a small campus. So we only have 7,000 students faculty to student ratio right now is actually 19 to one. So you actually kind of get that private school feel and what that promotes is just um, a closer relationship with your peers and with your professor. Uh, so it's just a more intimate classroom setting. They'll know you uh, by your first name. You're not in a massive lecture hall with hundreds of other students. And something else that I want to point out from this slide is that we actually get a lot of the adventurous students because as you can see there uh, on the statistics, we get 41, the demographic, sorry, we get 41% of students that are primarily from Los Angeles County and San Diego County. So I think it's almost half of the total student population at Humboldt State is from SoCal. Um, so if you kind of want that adventure, if you're looking to, if you're considering going out of um, out of state, but you don't want to do that, you want to pay in-state tuition, Humboldt State is the farthest you can go from home while still being in the state of California. So it's an awesome experience. Now there are going to be quite a few pictures throughout this presentation uh, because the picture is worth a thousand words. So uh, something that I love about Humboldt just in general is that we are five minutes away from the beach. It's um, We are surrounded by 1.2 million acres of the redwoods. We have so many different lagoons, waterfalls, uh, like I said, the rivers, the beach, the redwoods, there's uh, marine life, there's a lot of wildlife. So if you're kind of an outdoor enthusiast, this is the place to be. Uh, something that I get asked a lot, so I'll just say it now, is that it is colder in Humboldt County, so you can think of us kind of like Oregon or Washington. We get more rain and it is colder, but it doesn't snow there. Um, and again, I'm going to show you a few pictures about a lot of the outdoor activities that students do. If you're into water rafting, kayaking, canoeing, surfing, fishing, uh, or if you just want to go to the beach and read a book, um, it, all those things are very easily accessible. So all these pictures were taken by our school photographer for, for your enjoyment. And we have over 50 majors now that we do offer, uh, 69 minors. We have credentials, certificate programs, and 12 graduate programs. So a little bit of everything. Uh, for those of you wanting to go into education, uh, business, I myself was a business major, and uh, we do our best to get students internships. Uh, there's a lot of events for you to meet local businessmen, local businesswomen and uh, just build those connections that report recreation administration for anyone that wants to be an outdoor leader outdoor guide for kinesiology and for uh, psychology we have a lot of state-of-the-art equipment and a lot of research opportunities uh, for those as well 
Now we are most known for the biological sciences. So if anyone is interested in chemistry, biology, wildlife, zoology, marine biology, the cool thing about this is that students are having class from outside, which I think is just amazing. That's uh, the Coral Sea Research Vessel. So you, you get to go out into the Pacific Ocean and just do research and explore. For our forestry majors, we have a wildland fire management program. Um, and it's just two, uh, what is it? Two thirds of the upper division classes are outside. So I just think that's amazing that we give students that opportunity to be outdoors so you're not stuck in a traditional classroom. Uh, you're actually outside learning and exploring. Now I'm going to move along real quick here. We have a metal foundry on campus that melts between four to 6,000 pounds of bronze and aluminum. We have mus uh, the music majors. We have a lot of bands that travel actually all over the world, um, if you choose to. Internationally, some are just locals, uh, some within the state, out, out of the state. We have the academic and cultural support, so the Latinx Center, uh, multicultural center, women's resource center, LGBTQ center, quite a few things, academic advisors, career advisors that are there to support you, EOP for first generation college students and low income students, they, they prioritize those students into the program. Over 180 different clubs, we do compete at the NCAA division two level for athletics, so we have basketball, soccer, cross country, we have a rowing team, volleyball, quite a few intramural, so uh, some of the other counselors have already talked about that and there's just so much stuff so so there's a lot of pictures here what i wanted to show you is just a few pictures of that's our theater program so they are students actually designed uh the script writing the costumes the stage design um just so much stuff and these are what a lot of the local activities that students like to do like i mentioned before I think I have about 30 seconds left. So I've been hiking there at least six times. That's where some scenes from Jurassic Park were, were filmed. Um, and in the next 30 seconds here, just so you're aware, we do have space for 2,000 normally, uh, 2,200 students to live on campus. Those are traditional hall style apartments and suites. Uh, now the cost of attendance, if this is something that you're interested in, Total annual cost is right around 25,000 a year. So it's very affordable. Financial aid, don't forget to apply for FAFSA. And then the last thing, just freshman admission. So what we are looking for right now is just for you obviously to graduate your high school, complete the A through G requirements with a grade of C or better. And we are looking for a 2.5 cumulative GPA. And if you wanted to be a transfer student, we do accept lower division transfer students as well as upper division transfer students for fall and spring. So um yep that's pretty much it so i know that was super quick uh but thank you guys so much for your time and if you have any other questions i'd be more than happy to, to connect with you thank you awesome well we are going to wrap up here then so give me just a moment here thank you all so much for joining us we were super glad to have you my name is jay on behalf of strivescan i just want to say thank you to all of our panelists and thank you to all of the attendees who are here live asking your questions and to anyone following up again on the live recording you will be able to find that recording at strivescan.com forward slash w-a-c-a-c and don't forget to sign up for more sessions with the western uh ACAC fair we are happy to have you here and have a wonderful afternoon thank you <laughs>